Proverbs 6, verses 1 to 35, my son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, too thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Three do this now, my son, and deliver thyself, when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go humble thyself, and make sure thy friend. Forgive not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. 5. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways, and be wise. 7. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. 8. Provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. 9. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? 10. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. 11. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. 12. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. 13. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. 14. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. 15. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. 16. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yes, seven are an abomination unto him. 17. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. 18. An heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. 19. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. 21. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. 22. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. 24. To keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. 25. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. 26. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? 28. Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? 29. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. 30. Men do not despise a thief, if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. 31. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold, he shall give all the substance of his house. 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. 33. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. 35. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Opening Sentence Proverbs 6 verses 1 to 2 My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, Two thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Chapter 6 introduces the topic of surety and calls it a trap. It is defined in context as striking hands. The word surety is first used in Genesis when Judah offered himself as surety for his brother Benjamin. Notice that it involves the hand, as it also does in the book of Job. Genesis 43 verse 9, I will be surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him, if I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame for ever. Job 17 verse 3 Lay down now, put me in a surety with thee. Who is he that will strike hands with me? The first two verses of Proverbs chapter 6 are written in parallelism. Two verses are placed together to enlighten the understanding of the reader. The meaning of surety for thy friend is interpreted as stricken thy hand with a stranger, which indicates that to become surety means to strike hands or make an agreement. The person may be a stranger, but by striking hands he becomes a so-called friend. 
This warning against surety will occur again in chapters 17 and 22 of Proverbs. In Proverbs 17:18, A man void of understanding strikes hands and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. Proverbs 22:26, Be not thou one of them that strike hands or of them that are sureties for debts. Deliver thyself from the hunter. Proverbs 6 verses 3 to 5 Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself, when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go, humble thyself, and make sure thy friend. Forgive not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. 5 Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. The stranger is now referred to as a friend, but it is easy to see that God does not consider him a friend. God is clearly warning his son against entering into a covenant agreement with a stranger. This warning is a future foreboding of Israel's great tribulation. God calls surety a snare and compares it to becoming the prey of a hunter, finding the theme surety and adultery. This chapter begins with surety and it ends with adultery. Why would God's son need to become surety in the first place? God has promised to richly bless him if he will obey him. The following verses on being a sluggard present the reason. If God's son is a sluggard, he would rather strike hands with a stranger than to do the work required of him. Proverbs 6 verses 6 to 11 Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways, and be wise, seven which having no guide, Overseer or ruler, eight provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. Nine, how long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Ten, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Eleven, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Jesus told a parable about two sons, one who did the will of his father and one who did not. Matthew 21 verses 28 to 31 But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. In Proverbs, God instructs his son to go to the ant and consider her ways. The ant works without anyone demanding it of her. The ant does not have to enter into a covenant with a stranger to get her meat. God is issuing another warning to his son against a time to come in Israel's history. When they will be tempted to make a covenant with the Antichrist and take his mark so that they can buy and sell food. God's son needs to wake up from his slumber or else he will end up in spiritual poverty. The anatomy of a sinner, six things doth the Lord hate. Proverbs 6 verses 12 to 19 A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. 13 He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Fourteen frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Fifteen therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Sixteen these six things doth the Lord hate. Yes, seven are an abomination unto him. Seventeen a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Eighteen an heart that deviseth wicked imaginations feet that be swift in running to mischief, nineteen a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. The theme of chapter 6 involves the number 6. There are six things that a wicked man does. These are his actions. There are six things about man that the Lord hates. This is his anatomy. Instead of doing the will of the Father, men yield their bodies to work wickedness. It is humbling to remember that this is the identity of all mankind. However, these particular passages are a warning directed to God's Son concerning his wicked friends and family who desire to seduce him away from obeying his law. The law will talk with thee. Proverbs 6 verses 20 to 22 My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. 
Twenty-one bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. Twenty-two when thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. Living water was alluded to in Proverbs chapter 5. The living word is alluded to in chapter 6 by the phrase, It shall talk with thee. God's word is alive. The word quick means alive and active. John 6 verse 63 KDV It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Hebrews 4 verse 12 KDV For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God is practically begging his son to keep his commandments, because he knows that the strange woman will be unable to deceive the son who keeps his word. The law is light and life. Proverbs 6 verses 23 to 25 For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, twenty-four to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, twenty-five lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. This strange woman was introduced in Proverbs chapter 2. Her primary method of seduction involves flattery, but is also involves her beauty and her eyelids. Satan, who was the power behind the king of Tyrus, is also known for his beauty. This is in stark contrast to the virtuous woman. Ezekiel 28 verse 12 Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Proverbs 31 verse 30 Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Job wrote about the eyelids of Leviathan, that old serpent. Job 41 verse 18 By his kneesings a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. The strange woman has a counterfeit light that is very seductive to those who see and hear her. In contrast, God's eyes do not seduce men, they judge them. Psalm 11 verse For the Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven, his eyes behold, his eyelids try, the children of men. It is important to remember that Satan is attempting to counterfeit God and trying to usurp his rightful place as the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, Genesis 14 verses 19 to 22, Isaiah 14 verses 13 to 14, surety and adultery, Proverbs 6 verse 26, for by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. This proverb highlights the theme of the chapter, which began with surety that led to adultery. For the nation of Israel, God considers their idolatry and their worship of false gods to be adultery. In verse 5 of this chapter, the son who became surety was instructed by God to deliver himself from the hand of the hunter. This is not simply a warning against becoming bound by financial debt but a strong warning to the nation of Israel against making a covenant with the Antichrist and the great whore of the book of Revelation. They are warned not to take the mark of the beast, which is the number of a man, or 666. Men will be tempted to take this mark in order to buy a piece of bread. Spiritual Adultery Proverbs 6 verses 27 to 29 Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? 28. Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? 29. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. This proverb is more than just warning the son about physical adultery with his neighbor's wife. It is a warning to the nation of Israel against committing idolatry, which is spiritual adultery. Adultery destroys the soul. Proverbs 6 verses 30 to 33 Men do not despise a thief, if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. 31 But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold, he shall give all the substance of his house. 32 But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul.
Thirty-three a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. God would rather a man steal food to satisfy his hunger than to go to the strange woman and become surety to obtain food. The son should be more concerned about his soul than his body, just as Jesus taught his disciples during his earthly ministry. Spiritual adultery will destroy the soul. Matthew 10 verse 28 And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Ezekiel 18 colon For behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine, the soul that sinneth it shall die. Conclusion The Jealousy of Man and God Proverbs 6 verses 34 to 35 For jealousy is the rage of a man therefore. He will not spare in the day of vengeance. 35. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. The day of vengeance belongs to the Lord, who is the God-man Jesus Christ. He will not spare to punish those who become surety with the Antichrist. He will come to judge and to make war, and he will not accept a bribe. God is a jealous God. In fact, one of his names is Jealous. Exodus 34 verse 14. God will try the nation of Israel during the seven-year tribulation, also known as the time of Jacob's trouble. He will make the nation drink bitter water to determine if they are a faithful wife. Numbers 5. Summary. God warns his son Israel against becoming surety with a stranger. The son might be tempted to do so if he is a sluggard and too lazy to do the work that the father asks him to do. The son might be tempted away from God's words by the neighbor's false gods who promise quick riches, or in extreme cases, for a morsel of bread. In the midst of this warning against spiritual adultery is the description of a sinful man whom the Lord hates. This is a description of the so-called friend. The surrounding nations and the unbelievers among Israel will tempt the son to be unfaithful to God. All such wickedness will be punished in the day of vengeance. Dispensational Consideration God's Son was warned against becoming surety for thy friend. But the man Jesus Christ became surety for all men, especially ungodly sinners who are his enemies. Romans 5 verses 6 to 11. Hebrews 7 verse 22. In this dispensation of the grace of God given to the Apostle Paul for the Gentiles, Ephesians 3 verse 2. Jesus was made sin for those who place their faith in him, so that they can be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 Those who have trusted in his blood payment for sin are sealed by his Holy Spirit and are now members of his body. While believers cannot be seduced by the strange woman today, the mystery of iniquity is at work attempting to pervert the simplicity of the gospel of salvation. Counterfeit ministers look and sound like genuine ministers, except they add works to Christ's free salvation. This dispensation of grace is a time of grace and peace, the salutation found in every epistle written by the Apostle Paul. In contrast, the book of Revelation speaks of Jesus' return to judge and make war. Knowing the dispensational context of Scripture gives the believer assurance of salvation. Life Application this chapter is about the doctrine that pertains to the nation of Israel, but there are general principles that may be applied today. It is unwise to become surety for debts in any dispensation. A man ought to work to supply his needs, the needs of his family, and the needs of the church body. Everyone should avoid adultery, both in the flesh and in the spirit. Obedience to the written and preserved word of God is relevant in every dispensation. Proverbs 7 verse 10 And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. In Proverbs chapter 7, the son has to choose between his sister spouse and the harlot. Proverbs chapter 6 Homework Concordance Search Find the word surety in a King James Bible. It is found in only 14 verses. Define the word by studying the context of each reference. Compared to Webster's 1828 Dictionary Concordance Search, Find Sluggard in a King James Bible. It is found six times. The first time it occurs is in chapter 6, and it is the sixth word in the verse. 
Note, just as wisdom is portrayed as a woman throughout the book of Proverbs, the wise ant in Proverbs 6 verse 6 is called her. Have you ever heard of a kin ant? The ruler of the ants is a queen, and the worker ants are also female. God does not waste words in his holy Bible. Every word of God is pure and right, so we should humble ourselves and choose to believe every word, including the pronouns. Compare the ant that works without being told to do so shares a character trait with the virtuous woman. Proverbs 31 verse 13 She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Man and the number six, man was created on the sixth day. Genesis 1 verses 26 to 31 And the number of a man is 666. Revelation 13 verse 18 The book of Romans, a name containing six letters and having the word man in it, is the sixth book of the New Testament. The word man is found six times in Romans where it is the sixth word in the verse. Romans 2 verse 1, 2 verse 3, 3 verse 28, 5 verse 7, 6 colon 6. Our King James Bible is perfect. The Anatomy of a Sinner, compare Proverbs 6 verses 12 to 19 with Romans 3 verses 10 to 18. The Living Word, the Bible is alive. Use Blue Letter Bible to search for the following phrases. The Scripture saith, What saith the Scripture and the Scripture hath concluded. The Word of God is the Living Word, and it does indeed talk with thee, as Proverbs 6 verse 22 proclaims. The day of vengeance, while God will certainly judge all the earth. The following verse is one of many that teaches that the day of vengeance is predominantly against God's nation, Israel. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Read, Judges chapter 19 is a strange event that prefigures what God will do with the great harlot his unfaithful wife, Israel, in the future. Read Revelation 19 verse 11, Jesus' declaration of war against the world. Search Blue Letter Bible for the phrase, Grace and Peace. Who writes about grace and peace more than any other writer in the Bible?